Kia ora e tefano. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me in your home today. It's great to greet you as family and to be part of worship with you. Well, can you believe it? It's May the 10th, Mother's Day. The day is set aside in our calendar to acknowledge and honour mums across the country, many of whom are finding themselves in space of different normal. So to all the mums out there who are managing level three, go you. We're supporting you with our love and our prayers and we congratulate you and those you love for all the delightful experiences and the challenges level three is bringing you. Thanks for who you are and for all you're doing. You're awesome. For some of us, Mother's Days are filled with great family celebration or memories of women who have influenced our lives for good and for God. And we celebrate not just today, but especially today. Some of us, however, are challenged on days like this because our circumstances and our memories may not bring the joy we wish they would. And if that's you this morning, I want to remind you of how much you are loved and cared for by your church family and offer you again our love, our support and our prayers. Some of us have lost mums and so we're feeling thoughtful and some of us have lost children and we're grieving today. God self understands your loss. And hey, if it's your first celebration as a mum, congratulations. Given all of this, I think to some degree or one or another, all of us are needing to be a little braver today. Brave in our circumstances, brave in our memories, brave in our reactions and responses, and brave in looking to our immediate future. The scripture verse chosen as our focus for today comes from an Old Testament story about the passing of a legacy. It's the story of a couple of men and a nation, interestingly enough, but at its heart, it's a faith legacy that challenges us all. And it's a call to bravery that is also exampled in the life of women right through the course of scripture. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, we pick up the thread of Moses speaking to the people of Israel about the passing of his leadership legacy. And in this particular verse, he is reminding God's people to be strong and courageous and reassuring them that God himself goes with them and that he won't ever leave them or forsake them. I think you'll be seeing that verse on the screen about now. This first got me to thinking about some very brave women, ones I've read about in other places, a few I thought helpful to identify this morning. So let's begin with Deborah. You can read her story in Judges chapters 4 and 5 and in Hebrews 11. Her name means be, as in busy. She's known for her intuition and inspiration and some even refer to her as an effective agitator. Deborah was effective in stirring up Israel's agitation about their low spiritual condition and working for their deliverance. A warrior, a ruler, a prophetess and a poet, Deborah positioned herself by exercising her gift of trusting the Lord and taking him at his word from a base of living a God-honouring life. Now the jury is out on whether she was actually a mother of her own children, but she is regarded as a mother of all Israel, a woman of spiritual influence and action whose legacy speaks into the life of a nation. It makes me want to get my Deborah on this morning when I think about her. A little later on in scripture we're introduced to a beautiful woman by the name of Abigail and her name means cause of joy. Now she's a blend of brains and beauty. Wise, quick thinking and a peacemaker with a strategy that you can read about 
in 1 Samuel 25 and in 2 Samuel chapter 3. Perhaps you'll do that when we finish together this morning. She saves David from his own wrath and a reactionary and needless slaughter. She reminded David of his future and of God's destiny for his life. She saved lives in the process and was pretty brave in doing so. I could learn a lot from Abigail. And what about Eunice, mother of Timothy and daughter of Lois? Some of her story is recorded in Acts chapter 16 and in 2 Timothy 1, 3 and chapter 4. In writing to Timothy, Paul makes mention of the legacy of faith that lives in Timothy as having its heritage in the generational women of his family tree. Eunice, a Jewess married to a Gentile, set a brave course in the quiet nurturing of his son in the ways of the Lord and in believing that God would bring to pass his faithful promises to her and her family. Eunice's name means conquering well, a reminder that God is faithful to his promise and reliable in his dealings with us. Solid, consistent and faithful. A bit to learn there, I think, as well. I see these women as bold and brave. But I wonder about how confident they felt in the process. I wonder if they ever felt lonely, isolated, or that events around them were overtaking them. Did Deborah have moments of fear? Did Abigail ever feel uncertain or doubt her strategy? Was Eunice ever concerned that Timothy's heritage might be forgotten as he set the course for his life? I certainly know that I have felt all of those things as a mum. If we were sitting together in the auditorium this morning, I'd ask you to look around about now at all the brave women in the seats next to you, but I can't. So, how about taking a moment to picture them in your mind? Doing this might remind you today that you are not alone. Others are on this journey alongside you. In these unusual times, I think the call to live boldly and bravely, knowing that God is faithful and he will go with us is very real, not just to women, but to all of us. Life going forward demands all of the qualities of intuition, inspiration, brains, and a little beauty, the passing of our legacy of faith to each other, our families, our faith community and our nation. But we don't do it on our own. We move forward in the knowledge that God is with us. Our God knows the human condition from first-hand experience. He sees and understands our fears, our challenges, our celebrations along the way. He will not leave or forsake us. Psalm 46 verses 1 to 3 remind us, I think you might be seeing them on the screen just now, well I'm hoping you can, that our God is with us. And verse 10 is our challenge this morning. Be still and know that I am God. It's in the being still that we feel the presence of God and find courage. Whether we're at level 3 or level 4 or released into level 1, in taking the time to be still, we remember that we can rely on a faithful God for the courage to live boldly and bravely. God bless you as you move forward this week. And remember, young ones, to celebrate the godly influence of the women in your life. Throw some gifts around if you're able. Thanks for having me. I pray the rest of today is meaningful and refreshing. But right now, Let's be still together as we take some time in reflection. And thanks to the worship team who will help us to do that. God bless you as you contemplate in the stillness of the next few moments.